So right now we're in section 3.8 and we're looking at transformations of graphs of functions, or we could just say for short, transformations of functions. So we want to get some practice um, sketching graphs of functions that are transformations of other functions. So our instructions here, we're going to do some exercises. Exercises. Sketch the graph. of the function. All right, so those are instructions. So number one, say we have y equals, in parentheses, x plus 2 quantity squared plus 1. So we want to graph that function. So first we want to find what is the parent function here, the parent function. So imagine here, inside of the house I have this plus two. Imagine covering up that plus two. And also outside of the house, I have that plus one. So what's left basically is, if you look carefully, you got what y equals x squared, right? y equals x squared, that's gonna be our parent y equals x squared. This is one of our four famous parent functions that we need to be very familiar with. So if I sketch the graph of this, I'm going to do an x-axis and a y-axis. And remember, you have five key points for y equals x squared. You have what? Negative 2, 4. I'll plot that there. Negative 1, 1. I'll plot that there. 0, 0, 1, 1. And 2, 4. And it's the curvy parabola. It's like a U shape. It's not sharp there. It's curvy. And that came out a little crooked. Let me try to straighten that one up. Don't want it to be crooked. Okay, that's probably as good as I'm going to get it. Let's call my squaring function. Now, let's focus on this blue function. Sorry, the blue part. What happens with the blue part? If I just look at y equal x plus 2 squared, so that plus two right there, inside of the house, remember when you're inside of the house and you add or subtract something, you're gonna go over horizontal shifting. What does that plus two inside of the house do? Remember it shifts it left two. So shift left two. So I'm going to take each of my uh, my points, I'm going to shift them to the left two units. I'm going to go this green point, one, two. This green point, one, two. This green point is zero, zero. One, two. This green point, which is one, one, I'm going to move one, two to the left. And this green point, which is what? Two, four is going to be move two to the left. So you're going to have this blue graph right here. Blue graph. Now oh, that wasn't good, was it? I lost some of my points. Let's try it. So that's what that plus 2 inside of the house does. It shifts everything over to the left. Two units. Now, what does that plus 1, that red plus 1, do outside of the house? Let's write that. We got y equals x plus 2 squared, and then plus 1 outside of the house. What does that plus 1 do? That plus 1 there on the end is going to shift everything up 1, right? So when you're outside of the house and you add or subtract, it's going to govern vertical shifting. 
it's going to go in the direction of the sign when it's outside of the house. When it's inside of the house, it goes in the opposite direction of the sign. When it's outside of the house, it goes in the direction of the sign. So we're going to shift. Shift up one. Unit. I'm going to take all my blue points. I'm going to move them up one. So this far left point, I'm going to move up one. Then what? Negative three, one. I'm going to move up one. Negative two, zero. I'm going to move up one. Negative one, one. I'm going to move up one. And what? Zero, four. I'm going to move up one. It's going to be our final graph here in red. That's my final graph. Now I'm actually going to relocate um, this to the right. This is going to be give it its own beautiful coordinate plane here, x-axis, y-axis. And plot those points, those red points only. So first of all, we're going to take this, um, I'm going to plot this red point here at 0, 0,4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Is that 0, 0,4? No, it was 0, 0,5, my bad. Yeah, that wasn't good. It's all falling apart. Zero comma five. There it goes. I'm gonna plot this next red point slightly to the left, which is at one comma two. Sorry, negative one comma two. And then the point at negative two comma one. And then the point at negative three comma. Two. And then finally that last red point, which was what? Negative four, comma, five. <sighs> Clean up. So there we are. That's our graph, our transformation. Final transformation, right? This is y equals x plus two squared minus one. No, plus one. That's it. So grade me. Grade me. Let's do another example. Let's say we got um, two. So about y equals the negative absolute value of x plus 3. So first of all, we want to figure out what is our parent. So if you cover up this uh, blue negative here out front of the house, and this plus three here outside the house, you're gonna see what is left is what y equals the absolute value of x. That's the parent, y equals absolute value of x. Now this is one of our really famous um, dudes. One of our famous parent functions. So typically, y equals absolute value of x. Focusing on the green function, y equals absolute value of x at 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. And on the other side, negative 1, 1, and negative 2, 2. And you get a nice V. A nice V shape. The perfect V. So it's not curved, it's a square there at the corner. Now, when you're doing your order of operations, you always want to go from left to right. So you're going to do the blue blue first before you do the plus 3. So I'm going to work on the transformation. Y equals negative absolute value of x. So what does that minus out front do? What does that minus out front of the house do? Remember, it's a reflection. It's a reflection about the x-axis. We're going to reflect about... The x axis. So basically, it flips it upside down, you could say. All right, let's see. Can we do that? Can we take, uh, let's take this green point and flip it upside down? So 
negative 2, 2 goes to negative 2, negative 2. And then the point negative 1, 1, this point, this point right here, that's going to flip upside down. It's going to go from negative 1, 1 to negative 1, negative 1. 0, 0 stays. 1, 1 is going to flip upside down to 1, negative 1, and 2, 2 is going to flip upside down to 2, negative 2. You have this nice little upside down V now. It's an upside down V. Now, we got one more thing, right? We got a plus three outside of the house to deal with. So when I take that blue function and I make it y equals negative absolute value of x, and then plus three outside of the house. The question is, what does this plus three outside of the house do? Well, that is so outside of the house. Adding and subtracting covers vertical shifts, so we're going to shift which direction up in the direction of the sign when you're outside of the house. So shift up three, up three units. So I'm going to take every blue point that I have. I'm going to shift it up three. So starting with this left one, one, two, three. And the next one, one, two, three. And the next one, one, two, three. All right, so we got this going on, on the left side, and then on the right side, one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so that's your final graph now. Let's go ahead and put this on another. Oh, I lost my. My x axis too. Let's put this on another coordinate plane just so the red's by itself. You don't have to do this, but I like to do it. So I'm just plotting my red points. Alright, we got one here. Zero three, one at negative one, two, one at what? Negative two, one. And we got some over here. One, two, and two, one. This is the function y equals negative absolute value of x plus 3. That's it. Grade me. All right, let's see if we do something more interesting here. Hmm. <laughs> So we have something like um, y equals, uh, let's say, negative square root of negative x. Negative square root of negative x. So let's cover up, first of all, this uh, Take this, call this the red out front. Let's cover that up. And let's cover up the blue here. That negative, so we're covering up the negatives and what's left is our green, right? Y equals square root of X. So that's gonna be our parent function. Parent function. y, come on, y equals square root of x. Now, I want to make sure I leave myself enough space when I'm graphing all this stuff. I don't think I have enough space. Let me give myself more space. That should be a little bit better, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I don't have enough space to which that should do it. Now uh, is that gonna be enough space there? I think that'll be enough. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let me let me back this up. I just don't have enough space here. 
Okay. So my parent, I'm going to rewrite my parent. That's y equals the square root of x, right? So remember the square root function. You have four key points you have to remember for this. 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, and 9, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3. I'll go ahead and check off some of these marks. So this is 1 here. This is 4 here. This is 9. So first things first. So you want to go in order with these transformations. So the first transformation is the red one. We're going to look at y equals minus square root of x. If we're not looking at the blue yet. We're just looking at the red, the minus in front of the house. So what does that minus there do in front of the house? That's a reflection, right? So when it's out in front of the house, it reflects it upside down, so it's about the x-axis. So reflex about x-axis. OK, so basically, I'm going to take my points. I'm going to flip them upside down. I'm going to start with the 9, 3. I'm going to flip it upside down to 9, negative 3. Now I'm going to go to the 4, 2. I'm going to flip it upside down to 4, negative 2. Now, that wasn't 9, 3, was it? That was not 9, negative 3, I should say. Okay, 9, negative 3 would have been there. 4, negative 2 would have been there. Okay, now, 1, 1, we're going to flip upside down to 1, negative 1. And 0, 0 is going to stay at 0, 0. So, let me plot this. It's going to be an upside down version of the green. Yep. Okay, I'm actually going to label this. This is y equals the square root of x here. This is y equals negative square root of x here. And now we have one more, yet one more. We have to look at y equals minus square root of negative x. So the question is, what does that minus, this minus here inside of the house now do? This is going to reflect, right? This minus right here is going to be reflecting about the, when it's inside of the house, about the y-axis. About the y-axis. It's a side-to-side -side reflection. So each of these red points, we're going to flip over the y-axis. Now, let me take some numbers off. I'm going to have, what, negative 1 here. 2, 3. This is negative 4 here. This is 5, 6, 7, 8, negative 9 here. So I'm going to take these red numbers and flip them to the other side. So 0, 0 is going to stay. So that 1, negative 1 is going to flip over to negative 1, negative 1. 4, negative 2 is going to flip over to negative 4, negative 2. And 9, negative 3 is going to flip over here to negative 9, negative 3. And we're going to have something going in the opposite direction of the red graph. So here it is. This is y equals negative square root of negative x. Now let me go ahead and graph that on its own xy axis. I'm going to do its own little graph here. It wants its own graph. It wants to be a happy dude. It's not very happy right now. It wants to be happy. Be happy. He wants his own space. He wants his own place. He wants his own space. He wants his own place. There we go. All right, so I'm going to plot these blue points one more time. 0, 0, negative 1, negative 1. Was it negative 4, negative 2? 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 2. And negative 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, negative 3. That's it. That's it. That is my graph. y equals negative square root of negative x. Grade this, please. Grade this, please, Ms. Cooper. Teacher. Grade it. That's the one that's good.